Live on your sideline is sponsored by Seiden Stricker Noby John Deere. All those summer sprints, long tiring days in the weight room and countless hours in the film room came down to one game tonight. Welcome in to five on your sideline. I'm Lamont Hicks. I'm Corey Miller. The end of the high school football season has come for two of our local yes. teams tonight and the start of high school hoop season has it's come here. for many more. It's Let's here. get right to it. We're going to go to Columbia and Lutheran St. Charles taking on Lamar in the class two championship. The Cougars would fall behind 13 to nothing, but they put their hard hats on and they're going to go to work. Aaron Kofi finds Caleb Mays across the middle. Lamar, they wouldn't catch him. That's a tie ball or it's, we have a ball game, folks. It's close. Cougars defense smelled blood in the water and then they strike. Cyril Holloway recovers a fumble. He's going to go all the way for six more points. That's a 14 to 13 Lutheran St. Charles lead after a Lamar TD and a Charles Young kickoff return. We had it for a score tie game 11 seconds remaining. Who else are you going to give the ball to with a state title on the line? The Stanford commit himself. Arlen Harris Jr. Six seconds left. Lutheran St. Charles wins their first state football championship. 33 to 27. Tomorrow morning, St. Mary's will send out their high powered offense to blaze a trail that's never been done in school history. That's when a state championship in football. Since the playoffs started, the Dragons have been on fire, outscoring teams 216 to 36. Is that good, Ahmad? That sounds good to me. Their opponent will be St. Pius. They kick off at around 11 a.m. Oh, we'll have that game for sure. Normally, I crack some joke about the weather and how I'm happy to be inside, but I think after today, I could take some more football outside. But it's winter sports time now. Bidding basketball, the floor is yours. Mizzou's Javon Pickett's little brother Jordan in Belleville East taking on Collinsville. The Cayhawks did a lot of running in the first quarter, and Travion Swaggart did a lot of scoring. The bucket and the foul, old-fashioned three-point play. Meanwhile, Pickett and his Lancers scored two field goals in the first. Here's both of them. Well, here's one of them for Mr. Pickett. He scored both of them. This time later on, it's Pickett showing off his passing. TJ oh. Montgomery on the receiving end. He cans a triple. East wins 61 to 53. Great pass there. Let's go to MICDS hosting Westminster. Student section, they are fired up for this one. You know it. Early on, it's going to be Westminster's Matt Buchanan. Nice pass inside to Austin Vick. He sends it home. Wildcats looking good early. Rams are going to answer Brandon Mitchell Day going to come up here with the drive. Here it comes. Yeah, right there. Into the lane. Yep. Nice finish. That's two. That's and a charge. Yeah, well, hey, they didn't call it. <laughs> Westminster, they were too much. They go on to beat MICDS 54 to 34. Let's highlight the girls now. Parkway West at Parkway Central. Late in the fourth quarter, it's West's Madison Humey with the triple as the Longhorns extend their lead. Some nice passing later on from the Colts here. That's Zoe Fritz finishing off the bucket and a couple of late threes from Amy Rain pad the lead even more. Some sharp shooting from the Longhorns tonight. They win 59 to 34. Next up, Webster Groves hosting John Burroughs, the Lady Statesman on the attack early. It's Ava Marsh. She drives hard. She gets the deuce. That goes. On the other end, it was sunny outside today, Amon. Yeah, it but was it was sunny. raining threes inside <laughs> Webster Groves from Celia Thayer. Not enough, though. Uh, Webster Groves does go on to get the win, 58 to 46. All right, back to Parkway Central. This time it's the boys, West versus Central. And that man, Jamarion Wayne, is heading to Mizzou to play football. And just saying, I think the Hoops team could use him, too. Oh, that's All right. cheap shot. All right, <laughs> some nice shot to kick things off from Central's Andrew King. That's a three. And then here comes Wayne. You know we couldn't have this highlight without him. Nifty move right there in the bucket. And then another great play from West, Tyler King with the steal and big finish on the other end. West goes on to win 70 to 58. Up the road to Parkway North now. I don't know if this Viking mural is intimidating or if it's <laughs> creeped me out. Maybe a little bit of both. Anyways, here's Eli Trittinger. Nice layup. That's two north up early, but south can score from deep. Demonte Hurt gets that one to go. They're hanging around. Next possession, north answers right back. Keelan Mitchell up and one. We got a good game going on. Here's the play of the night, though, Ahmad. Okay, I'm watching. Ade Papula. That's Ooh. a buzzer-beating dunk. Yes, buzzer sir. Buzzer-beating jam time. He had 40 points tonight, Whoa. but Parkway South, huge comeback in the second half. They win 59-58. to 58. 40? Wow. So we saw Mizzou hoops fall last night in a disappointing loss to Liberty. Could Illinois avoid a similar fate tonight against Rutgers? And mum is the word at Bush Stadium due to the lockout. But the Blues have plenty to say as they try to get healthy and look ahead to facing the best team in hockey. Front and a shot, and Hedman again, and he buries it.
There was no comeback magic for the Blues in Tampa last night, and it's only going to get tougher. Their next two games are against the team with the most points in the league, the Florida Panthers. The Blues have been hampered by slow starts and COVID losses lately. Starting goalie Jordan Biddington was the latest to hit the COVID list on Thursday, but there's no excuses to make. The Blues know it's time to dig deep and up their game despite being shorthanded. You know, like we got to start our first period really well. Because like it's been our uh, biggest enemy in the uh, last few games. Uh, we didn't start well, but uh, yeah, when we're losing uh, our top players, it's uh, it's tough. But uh, you know, uh, we gotta we gotta do something about it. The Missouri Tigers are licking their wounds after an embarrassing 66 to 45 loss to Liberty on the road last night. It's a 4-4 four four start for Mizzou Hoops and Conzo Martin, but coach says the loss is a teachable moment for his team. It's one our guys can understand what it takes to play in the true role environment. The level you have to focus, be on your assignments. It's, it's, you know, you say as coaches, you, your team, and everybody on your sideline. And that's very important to understand that you need each other to be successful. So that's why at a premium, you have to understand what's going on in your assignments, your focus levels. Are. Didn't you miss this sight? Fans in attendance as Illinois took on Rutgers earlier today. Alfonso Plummer is rocking Ayo Desumu's old number, and he was trying to play like him tonight. He dropped a team-high 24 points. Jacob Granderson was next in line with 16 points as he sneaks behind the defense on this inbounds play. Illinois leading big, and can't forget about Trent Frazier. Seems like he's been rocking the orange and blue for 10 years, but he can stay if he shoots like that. The Allied Knights say put us back in the top 25 after this 86-51. to Beat down. Hopefully these scenic shots of empty stadiums aren't what we'll be seeing come March, but for now it's radio silence and baseball. We'll have the latest on the lockout coming up next. We'd love to bring you an update on the Cardinals offseason plans tonight, but that's just it. There are none. We are now in day three of the owners locking out the players after failing to come to terms on a new collective bargaining agreement. It could be a long winter, but one writer thinks the game could still come out of this with a bright future. Because it will allow both sides to kind of fix the game and maybe iron out some, some creases there that have been hindering the game and preventing it from growing to further audiences and making an all around better product. I mean, you see lots of interest in the NBA and the NFL. You see declining interest in MLB. I think a work stoppage again, while not beneficial for the game in any way right now, could hopefully lead to better results moving forward that will help better push this game. But it's not all bad news. We could get some nice Cardinals news this weekend. A number of former Cardinals are up for Hall of Fame consideration on the Golden Era ballot. The captain, Kenny Boyer, certainly worthy. Roger Maris, he's there again. 1982 World Series champion with the Cardinals. Jim Cott is there. And Dick Allen and Minnie Minoso, who each played a season in St. Louis that a lot of people forget about, are also on the ballot. That voting will be announced on Sunday. I think at least one former Cardinal is going to get in. But tomorrow, Saturday, we got a big SEC championship game do. out down in Atlanta. I need a prediction here. Uh, since Mizzou's not there, okay, right, Alabama, Georgia, that's right. So you'd be picking Mizzou. If uh, there. Mike Bush actually picked Alabama. I'm throwing, I'm uh, throwing him under the bus. He did that. I'm not as confident. They got to win to get in the college, the college football, football playoff. playoff. I'm going Georgia. Georgia by ten. I'm not going to bet against Nick Saban. I won't do it. Jimbo Fisher will have something nice to say about that. And Kirby Smart. Ooh, okay, we're done with this show tonight. That's five on your sideline. That's Corey Miller. I'm Ahmad Hicks. We will see you all next week. Have a great weekend. on your sideline was sponsored by Seidenstricker Noby John Deere.